Well, hello and welcome to this webinar. Um, and today we are on the topic of Trinity College London's digital grades and diplomas. My name is Sharon Mark Teggart, and along with Dr. Sally Cathcart, we are the co founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers, which is a global uh, online community of piano teachers where we all love to learn as much as we teach. So you are very, very welcome um, to this live webinar today. Um, and I just want to, first of all, um, say hello to Sally, my other co-founder. Hello, Sharon, and hello, everybody, and a big welcome to today's webinar, which is a really exciting one, I think, that we are having. Sharon. Yeah, we are so excited to have you guys here. So really pleased with um, to be welcoming a three-fold team from Trinity onto our live call today. We have Anna uh, Dreyer-Beers. Hello, Anna. <laughs> we have Linda Nottingham, um, who is a specialist uh, piano examiner. Hello, Linda. Hello, everybody. And also, I want to say hello to Natalie Christopher, who is the Sector Support Manager at Trinity. And I've got to say, has been an absolute star in, in helping us make this happen. We've been sending so many emails back and forth. I feel <laughs> I know you so well. <laughs> How are you? Hello. <laughs> Great. So, Sally, I'm going to hand over to you for the next bit. Yeah. So again, welcome to everybody. Um, our chat is open today. Make sure that you're saying to all panelists and attendees when when you're putting anything in the chat. Um, but we're also uh, delighted to have Nicola King from Trinity and she's in the wings. So you won't see Nicola, but she's there in the wings, ready to respond to any live questions that you have got. And we know that many of you, it's great, sent over questions in advance. So um, so that the team here could have a look uh, at those uh, with a view to answering them. So they, they will come into the mix later on in the call. So at this point, you know, do feel free to type into the chat, let us know whereabouts you're listening for, from, and we'll give some of you a bit of a shout out. And Sharon's going to take over a in a moment again to tell you a little bit more about the Curious Piano Teachers before we hand over to the Trinity team. So we hope you're feeling curious. Sharon, over to you again. Wonderful. And actually, just as I go to share my screen, <clears throat> Sally, I'm going to ask you to maybe launch our first poll, um, which is just asking a curious question. Um, is this your first webinar with us today? So I'm going to go back in and share my screen again. Um, and while the results of that poll are coming in, uh, for those of you who have maybe not heard about us before this webinar, um, I would just like to say that at the Curious Piano Teachers, uh, we have an online membership site where together, as I've, I've just said, we all learn as much as we teach. Uh, members get access to an extensive library of ready to use teaching resources and videos and we've been doing this for over five years now so there are well over 50 topics in there and that's growing on a monthly basis so kind of everything from uh, how to plan lessons effectively how to teach notation teaching technique sight reading memorization uh, improvisation uh, a real mix of resources for um, you know, beginner students right through to, um, you know, teaching adults, um, resources for educating parents, for creating studio policies and resources there as well. Um, we've obviously, since March, we have also been looking at creating quite a lot of online lesson resources as well. Um, so it's all very, very practical. It's very, very specific. You can literally lift teaching ideas and just run with them in, in your lessons. And we have here um, our very lovely community manager. Uh, her name is Hannah O'Toole, and she looks after, um, along with Sally and I, all of our wonderful members sending out weekly newsletter um, and interacting with members uh, inside our member exclusive Facebook group. Um, and we ultimately, we connect piano teachers globally 
we connect them all together. So not only inside the Facebook group, we also, and again, this is a new thing that we've been doing since, um, since uh, lockdown back in March, is that we have been uh, having what we call community chats on Zoom. So people go into breakout rooms and it's been a lovely way for people to feel even more connected um, uh, we obviously have member exclusive webinars and we also run um, exclusive courses for our members as well. So I'm just going to say then if you are if you are curious, you can um, we will put a link in the chat a little bit later because we have um, a coupon free support and it will enable you to give it a monthly trial um, get in there and find out a little bit more about what exactly it's like and um, then after that trial you can either cancel or if you love it so much you can um, continue as a member. So uh, Sally I'm going to hand back over to you again for the results of that poll. OK, so I've just shared it with everybody because we can see that 71 percent are uh, it's your first webinar with us. So a really big welcome to all you people and to those of you who are returning. Um, welcome back. We're glad to, that you've come to join us again today. So I'm just going to stop sharing that one. Sharon. OK, that's great. Lovely, Sally. OK, so I think um, I'm maybe actually, Sally, going to just hand right back over to you again. I'll set up oh, right, okay. the second poll, um, which is just to find out a little bit more about what everyone um, has been doing in terms of um, in terms of the Trinity digital exams. And Sally, in the meantime, is going to do a little bit of an introduction. OK, Sally. OK, so before we get started with the main presentation, I just want to take a few minutes, really. To put exams and what we're going to be discussing today into context, and I'm sure you'll agree that over this 2020 year, um, the world has changed. You know, it's a very different place now to what it was back last November. And each and every one of us has had to change and adapt our way of living in, in all sorts of different ways. And COVID-19 continues to have a big impact on our well-being and mental states. Now, as, as in many other uh, professions and areas of life, the changes have been really quite profound for us as piano teachers, instrumental teachers. And I think they've been quite long lasting. I think as we go into a, a, a period possibly where we're going to have a vaccine, I think some of the changes will actually stay with us because they are positive changes, some of them. Back in the UK in March, within a matter of weeks, all that could and I think that was most of us, we moved our piano teaching online. Now, back in January, before COVID, if a Victorian piano teacher had peeked into a private piano lesson, I think she, because they were mostly female in those days, would have recognised many typical aspects of a lesson. So a teacher-led approach, a master apprentice and model, and a focus around a preparation for an instrumental exam. Now, where we are now, November, I think they would peep in and find it a very different and somewhat alien world with some of the same elements, of course, but with more pupil led work, better use of questions from teachers and more direct and purposeful feedback. And that's because we've all been teaching online and the dynamics of lessons have felt very different. I certainly have felt that in my teaching that it I've had to adapt. I've had to change. And the other difference I think that they would notice is that there has been generally less emphasis on exam preparation because just like the rest of us, the exam boards have not been able to continue with their usual method of delivery, which up till this point had been exclusively face to face exams. So I just want to take a moment for us to think about this period in time from an exam board point of view, and I'm talking about all the exam boards now. So. From an exam board's point of view, everyone has had to work remotely from home, away from a centralised and more streamlined operations. And we know just from our own interactions personally that everything takes longer when you don't see people face to face. And of course, the more people that are involved in the decision making process, the longer this all takes, believe you me. And exam boards have had to make some really tough and big decisions. 
they've had to create an entirely new format for exams. And the work that's had to go on for the development of these new qualifications is immense and should not be underestimated. They've had to take a new qualification to Ofqual and they've had to, had to have it approved by Ofqual. Now, I think you'll all recognize from all the uh, A-levels, GCSEs, Ofqual have had a very, very busy time of it this year. Finally, for, the, for our instrumental exam boards, they've had to put the nuts and bolts of delivery in place. And that means hundreds and hundreds of hours of planning and hundreds of hours of coding. And as I say, this is applied to all the main exam boards. They've had to adapt, change and create rapidly um, in, in a situation that has been continually evolving. You know, it's not as though we've had a static situation since March, it's been changing almost weekly what's been going on. And then of course, everybody who works in the exam board is only human. And I think you'll recognize that the strains and stresses on yourself as a teacher and as a family member, they've been immense. And they've been, the, the exam board uh, employees have been experiencing the same levels of anxiety and stress as everyone else. Now, I don't tell you this in order for you to feel sorry for them, but indeed just to place the enormous changes and rapid changes that they've had to make into perspective. And for all the exam boards, maybe five years of, of development has happened in a matter of months. So now I'm gonna hand back to Sharon, I think, uh, for the results of the poll. Yes, I just wanna say a big thank you because 93% of you um, have, have voted. So I can say that 17% um, of you on the call today are saying I've already used them. 45% are saying I'm currently preparing my student for, uh, for these exams. 15% of you are saying I have already used them and I'm currently preparing more students. 10% um, say I'm planning to use them in the future. And 13% of you are saying I'm not sure yet. I'm here today to find out a little bit more. So I think without further ado, I am just gonna end that poll there and I'll share the results. And I am Natalie gonna hand over to you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Great, thank you ever so much. And thank you, Sally, as well for um, your introduction as well. That was that was really helped to um, put the context of what we've been doing over the last, um, well, six, nine months across, thank you. Um, bear with me a moment. I can see that many of you have been saying hello on the chat. Um, keep doing that. I'm gonna have a bit of a fiddle around with my computer so that I can get the presentation up for you so let's just get that ready for you um, there we go can everybody see that smile and nod thank you Anna um, I'm just going to move that so I'm not looking too bizarrely at my screen there we go right okay so um as um, the ladies have already said, the focus of today's webinar will be on Trinity's new digital grades and diplomas, looking specifically at how this will work for piano exams. Uh, my colleagues and I will be presenting to you for the majority of the session, and then we will do our best to answer some of the questions that have been sent over to us already. If we have any time at the end, um, we will um, look at the questions that have been posted in the Q&A section. Um, as Sally already said, my colleague Nicola is in the background and um, she's looking at the chat today and, and the Q&A. So if you've got any questions, please put them in that Q&A section because she's going to be posting lots of links for us as well in the chat. So we don't want any questions to get lost. Um, as uh, the poll actually suggested, some of you have already entered um, candidates for Trinity's um, summer interim digital exams. Um, if you have any queries about those today, I'm going to ask you to hold fire purely because we've got a lot to get through um, during this session. Um, 
but I just wanted to say that if one um, one of the improvements we have made ahead of launching these new exams is to streamline the way in which customers can get in touch with us. So if you're based in the UK and Ireland and have a query you would like us to follow up on, please use the email address being posted in the chat. Um, if you're based outside of the UK and Ireland, um, you'll need to contact your lo local Trinity representatives um, where you are based. Uh, details of where to find their information can be uh, found on our website and that's, uh, there's a link being posted for that too. Hopefully you're already aware that we released our 2021-2023 uh, piano syllabus a few weeks back. Uh, naturally we'll be covering elements of this in today's session but if you want to um, some more information a broader look more information and a broader look at the syllabus as a whole uh, Linda and I did a webinar on that a couple of weeks ago so um, please do feel free to um, have a look at the recording for that and watch it back. Um, and if you're interested in the more general overview of our digital grade and diplomas, and including rock and pop, Anna and I did a session on this with a colleague of ours um, earlier on in the week. Um, and both of, um, both of these links sessions are being, being made available in the chat now, so you can watch them back. So, Without further hesitation, I am delighted to be joined today by Senior Examiner Anna Dryer Beers and Piano Specialist Examiner Linda Nottingham. Anna, could you start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, please, and the role your role within Trinity? Sure. So, hi everybody. It's lovely to be here. I'm one of the Senior Examiners for the Classical and Jazz Panel. So I'm involved in all aspects of examining, including the development of new products like this one, training of the panel and standardisation of them. And I also really enjoy going into the exam room and hearing candidates perform, and I'm missing it terribly, I have to say. Um, whilst we've been working digitally, it's been really wonderful to watch performances from all over the world, and that has made up for that in part. And our teams found the new product and the development of the digital product really fun and interesting to work on. And Linda? Hello everybody, uh, like Anna, I'm very pleased to be here. So I'm a specialist examiner in piano, and of course I'm also a generalist examiner. Uh, I've been doing this for over eight years, and more recently I've been involved in examiner training and in the development of the piano syllabus. And like Anna, I do miss seeing, meeting, chatting to, listening to our candidates, but hopefully that will return at some point. Uh, piano has been part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember, uh, from being a little girl who watched the keys go up and down and make a magical noise or sound, <laughs> to my work as um, a performer, teacher and examiner. I particularly love uh, playing chamber music and duets, which of course are part of our exams as well in normal times, and I particularly like uh, working with singers too, because I'm very interested in the links between uh, language and music. So Linda, having been both a teacher and an examiner for a number of years, how do you think digital assessments complement musical learning? Uh, well, I think that it's um, responsive to the changing ways in which people are both consuming and showcasing their music. None of us wants to do away with live performance, indeed with face-to-face -face exams. But um, these digital assessments have an authenticity to them, I think. When you think about how many musicians are broadcasting uh, now on YouTube or Twitch, the skills required for a recorded or streamed performance may not be exactly the same as for live performance, but they are comparable. And in the long term, it gives students the option to um, choose which kind of exam uh, they want to do to enable them to perform at their best. And Anna, from a qualifications perspective, the digital exams, they are just as robust and carry the same academic weight as face-to-face. -face. Yeah, absolutely. So they're accredited by the regulators in exactly the same way as the face-to-face -face exams. They carry the same currency, academic rigour, and where applicable at grade six to eight and at diploma level UCAS points. So they usual our usual high quality grade and diploma exams, but just delivered digitally. Thank you. Linda, could you mute your mic, please? You've got that background noise again. 
<laughs> sorry Linda's been having some problems with background noise today we're not quite sure where it's coming from so she's gonna have so um, we're gonna have to keep muting her every so often um, so here is an overview of the music exams we are currently able to offer under the new digital grade and diploma syllabus you'll notice that music certificate FTC, FTCL diplomas theory and teaching diplomas are not currently offered. Our intention is to keep adding to the portfolio of exams we can offer digitally. However, it is important to us that our digital assessments are designed to be exactly that and not simply a face-to-face -face exam conducted via Zoom. So we're going to spend a little bit more time looking at these examinations to make sure that any decision to offer them online is the right one and that they will hold the same levels of academic rigour and validity. So what's been since the summer? Quite a lot. Firstly, and most significantly, there are no calculations involved. This means that the final mark received is exactly as it would be in a face-to-face -face exam, based purely on the performance uploaded. We will go into a further detail about timelines shortly, but this also means that with no calculation process to go through, results will be issued quicker. Candidates can be entered for exams at any time. This means that, for example, if you have a student who wouldn't have been ready to sit their exam in this autumn, they don't need to wait until March to do it. They can book a digital exam as soon as they are ready to record. It also means it's possible to enter for an exam outside of school term time. As I mentioned earlier, we have streamlined how you, the customer, contacts us. This should reduce any confusion that may have arisen through emails sent to various email accounts. One email address for all of your digital grades and diploma inquiries. A gentle reminder though, for those of you watching today from outside of the UK and Ireland, that you will need to contact the market representatives where you are based. And we have done lots and lots of work to the digital uploads portal. Many of you will be relieved to hear that teachers and parents can register more than one candidate using the same email address and that controls have been modified to try and ensure notifications are received. Candidates will have two separate upload boxes, one for their video and another for their supporting documents. And the upload limit has been increased to a flat one gigabyte for all candidates. Candidates will be asked to complete an upload submission information form, which acts as a checklist for everyone concerned that all the necessary components have been uploaded. And there will be an on-screen notification upon successful submission. Once a candidate has submitted their performance, the portal will also provide clearer guidance as to what stage in the process the assessment is at. Anna, would you mind talking us through a few of the other changes that have been made, please? Of course, as soon as I find the unmute button. <laughs> so firstly, we're, be, we're delighted to be able to offer digital grades and diplomas for all instruments, and we weren't able to do that over the summer. So that's a nice step forward. And as you've already mentioned, Natalie, the calculated assessments that were in place over the summer have been removed. So for classical and jazz exams, this means the reintroduction of technical work. And we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. And we've introduced an overall performance criteria, and that replaces the necessity for the supporting tests, your, the sight reading, musical knowledge, and so on. Um, again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But because we're living in some very uncertain times all over the world, we never know when we're going to be thrown into lockdown or released, as it were. We've um, also introduced COVID guidelines for digital exams. So we do want the digital exams to replicate the face-to-face -face experience as much as we can, especially when it comes to accompaniment and the quality of instrument and the equipment and so on. But we do realise that national and local lockdowns can cause uh, quite significant barriers to that. So we've got a policy in place and some guidelines and both are available to download from the Digital Grades and Diplomas website page. So we're also requiring candidates to upload a submission form, which Natalie's already mentioned, and we'll talk you through that later in the session as well, so that's all clear. And Linda, what hasn't changed? Well, the requirements uh, for ATCL and LTCL, the LTCL diplomas are exactly the same as they are for face-to-face -face exam. It's a recital. Uh, the exams are all assessed by the same examiner panels, 
who are undertaking the same rigorous training and standardization, and candidates are required to upload copies of any music that is not from Trinity Publications. Most importantly, candidates must upload one continuous video. I cannot emphasize this enough, even with the additional technical work requirement. The video must not be edited. It must not be multiple videos put together. There must not be multiple video files uploaded to the portal, just one continuous video. We've increased the upload limit to one gigabyte, so for the majority, file compression should now not be needed, unless possibly it's a diploma uh, recital, or if you're using a particularly fancy camera to film it with. Um, we'll go into some more detail about filming piano exams later on. So in summary, the requirements for face-to-face, -face, the summer 2020 session, and today's digital exams can be compared like so. You can see that for classical and jazz grades over the summer, the removal of technical work and supporting test requirements were accommodated for by a calculation. But from here on in, technical work will be required and candidates will be assessed on their overall performance. The requirements for diplomas are exactly the same as, as in face-to-face. -face. We're now going to look in a little bit more depth about how each type of exam is assessed. But firstly, I'd like to remind you that all the syllabuses are available to download from the website. The links have been posted once already, I think, but we'll post them again just in case anyone has missed them. Anna, would you mind starting us off with the grade exams, please? Sure. So in the same way uh, as we do the face-to-face -face exams, the grades are marked out of 100, with a maximum for piano exams of 66 for the pieces, just in case there are any um, uh, teachers who teach singing as well, of course, at grades six to eight, it's still 68 for the songs. Uh, 14 marks for piano for the technical work. And then we then have 20 marks to give for the overall performance, which is a different area that we're assessing instead of supporting tests. So how will candidates know which technical work to perform? They're not going to have to perform all of the scales and arpeggios and exercises listed in the syllabus for that grade, are they? Well, that would just be mean, wouldn't it? That's not what we do in life exams. So no, what we've done is we've, we've created bundles for candidates to choose from and they're available to download from the website. And if we take a look at the requirements for piano that Nat has kindly put up there, you can see that candidates can choose from set A or from set B. So to use my new favourite analogy, sorry, I was looking at them then, just transfixed on them. Um, it's a bit like choosing between two set menus when ordering a takeaway. It is. I'm sure we all know a lot about ordering takeaways at the moment. <laughs> so um, the exercises are very similar to what you do when you prepare for your live exam. The candidates required to perform two from two different groups, but instead of the examiner selecting one and the candidate selecting one, um, the candidate can select both. Just to make sure they're uh, one from group one, one from group two and one from group three, each not two from the same group and just two exercises overall. So it's important to note where the requirement is to play from memory. Um, we need to see that candidates are doing that. So they're asked to close their books and remove them from the piano, perhaps put them on top of the piano. Um, they need to open them again, obviously, for their exercises. Candidates can have a list of scales and arpeggios, so they can use the downloaded one from the website, or they can write that up in a way that's going to be easier for them to follow. Um, but it should be in the same order as the ones on the website. And they need to show this list to the camera before they begin playing the scales. So they don't need to announce which scale they're playing. If they're playing them in the order that we are expecting to see them, then we'll know which one they're playing. They don't either need to um, tell us which articulation or dynamics they're playing because that's also on the printed lists. They can also have a, a person in the room with them, prompting them for the scales much like they would in a face-to-face -face exam to tell them which one to play next and how to play it. So the guideline here is you can have them written and present them in any way you like, as long as you're not adding anything to that list that isn't already on the printed one. 
And we need to see that list to make sure that that's happening by you showing it to the camera before beginning the technical work. So all the information regarding that can also be found on the website. Thank you, Anna. Um, Linda, in light of the new piano syllabus, is it worth just clarifying how this works in relation to the syllabus overlap period? Yes, I think so, as this can be just a little confusing sometimes, but that always occurs in the overlap period. So a link to the technical work requirements for all of our digital grades and diplomas has been posted in the chat. And here you'll see that there are two listed for piano, one for the 2018 to 2020 syllabus and one for the 2021 to 2023 syllabus. So candidates entering for a digital piano grade for the 31st of December this year, 2020, must present the pieces and the technical work from the 2018 to 2020 syllabus. Throughout 2021, candidates can submit pieces and technical work from either syllabus, the 2018 one or the 2021 syllabus but not a combination of the two. Now from January 2022, candidates must present from the 2021 to 2023 syllabus. And the thing to be wary of here is that some of the pieces from the 2018 syllabus have been included in the repertoire for the new syllabus. So if a candidate chooses to play these in an exam post 1st of January 2021, it is important to remember that they need to play the technical work and exercises from the 2021 syllabus. So I hope that's clear. As always, all this information is available on the website, which we'll share a link for now. Thank you. That's an absolute nightmare trying to articulate that lot. I know it's a lot of dates and it's, it's a mouthful. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, Anna, could you please tell us more about the overall performance section of the assessment criteria, please? I will. Okay, so I think first it's important to understand how we came to develop this, as well as what's being assessed. And our first steps when determining how best to create a digital exam experience was to consider what we might assess in the digital context that was different from a live exam. Um, as any of you all know who use our exams often, you know, we don't, we, we don't want to assess the same thing twice across an exam. So we began by thinking about the use of the digital platform as part of today's changing world. And the very important aspect of developing the young performer, of creating a whole performance, either live or digitally. And this seemed like a perfect opportunity to provide a way and a format for performers to develop what are very valuable skills. And not just for music, actually, but in life generally, how to present oneself. So we worked to develop the assessment of the overall performance. And the new set of criteria that you see in front of you there um, adds something completely different for candidates and indeed for their teachers when preparing them. So we're asking them to deliver a performance, not just a recording, to think about how they present themselves during that performance, to um, think about how they transition between the songs or the, the pieces that they're playing and between the sections of the exam to regard the entire video as they would a recital. So the criteria itself, as you can see, is broken down into two sections and each of those sections is worth 10 marks. So we have performance delivery and focus, and there we're assessing the assurance and the continuity of the performance. So are there smooth transitions between the pieces? If there are, if any of you do teach um, rock and pop keyboards or electronic keyboards as well as piano, settings for those would be something to consider. How smoothly they're achieved, whether the candidate's taking a long time to find what they're doing for piano, how are they finding their next piece? Are they doing that lovely thing some young performers play do where they hold the pedal down and turn the pages over while the music's still going on in a sort of look no hands fashion? Or are they holding on to the atmosphere to the end of the piece and then calmly moving across to the next piece? Can they find their pieces easily within their books? And are they maintaining the performance in a focused way as they move between the pieces and across the technical work? 
So musical awareness assesses whether the candidate has sound musical knowledge of their whole program. So if we expand a little bit on that, are they able to demonstrate sustained awareness of appropriate interpretations of their pieces? Can they move fluidly between the styles and genres or if they're playing pieces all in the same style, which as we know some of our, our students choose to do, can they maintain that single style without losing their engagement with it? Is there a sustained commitment to their personal interpretations of the scores of the pieces they're playing? And are they truly engaged with the whole performance rather than just the little bits of it? Thank you. Um, we can take a look at how a typical classical and jazz candidate prepares for their exam here. We'd recommend that candidates film or at least ready to film at the point of entering for their exam. The reason for this being that candidates will only have two weeks from receipt of their login details in which to upload their recording. We can also see the process from when the examiner receives, receives the submission to when the final result re is received. Like in the summer, the examiner will input marks and comments into the portal. This should take around two weeks and certificates should follow about four weeks later. However, if a candidate is referred, these timescales will not apply. So it is important that candidates are aware of what they need to do and submit to prevent any delays. Linda, can you tell us about the assessment criteria for diplomas, please? Well, actually, um, it's the same as it is for face-to-face -face exams, with 96 marks awarded for the performance and four marks for the programme and planning. The preparation ahead of the exam is also the same as in face-to-face -face exams, with programme approvals needing to be obtained before entering for their exam, should they wish to perform any own choice repertoire, of course. Again, we would advise not entering for the exam before being ready to submit the video. With regard to the examiner timetable, a timeline, sorry, I'm obsessed with timetables, timeline, <laughs> this is much the same as it was over the summer. However, we're pleased to be able to tell you that with the release of these new digital exams, we have streamlined our processes, which we believe will see diploma results released within around six weeks. That's good news. I'd like to take a little bit of time now to talk you through the two different ways candidates based in the UK can enter for their exams. Again, those based outside of the UK and Ireland will need to check their country pages on the website for information on how to put their exam. Um, a link has been shared already in the chat, but it may be shared again if Nicola's not busy answering questions. Um, if you're based in the UK and normally enter for a Trinity exam through a public exam centre or via our online booking system, you can book your exam via the link on the web page in the chat now. For administrative purposes, you will be asked to, to, to select a centre. So please use either the centre that you usually use for exams or the one that's in closest proximity to you. Continue to complete the necessary details and proceed to payment. Candidates should receive their login details within one week of booking their exam and will have, again, two weeks from receipt of these login details to upload their recording. For those who normally enter exams via a private centre, such as a school or a music service, this is still available as an option and through the usual methods. This also applies to those of us joining us today from the Republic of Ireland, who should enter via their local area representative. They will, of course, require you to provide an email address or addresses in order to send out the login details. What I would ask you to keep in mind is that centre reps have been asked to collate as many entries together as possible, rather than submitting on an ad hoc basis. So please do keep in touch with them about when they anticipate doing this or if they've got any deadlines that they're putting in place for, for entries. Once the rep has submitted their entries, the same timeframes apply as per the online booking system with login details being received within one week. If you have booked a face-to-face -face exam through your local area representative and would like to convert this to a digital exam, please do contact them and they will assist you with this. So, you've prepared your students for their exam, you're ready to book, now it's time to record. We've already mentioned that the video must be one continuous recording, but I am saying it again. Linda, what else is important for candidates to remember when recording their piano exams? 
Well, apart from doing the one continuous video, um, <laughs> doing a sound test is important so that the balance and volume can be judged. The candidate needs to be satisfied with that before proceeding. Examiners need to have a really good view of the candidate, but we do understand that some of this will depend, be dependent on room size and the type of camera that people use. If you can fit in the whole performer into the frame and still give us a clear view, that would be ideal. But if, the, if it needs to be a little more limited so that perhaps the feet can't be seen, then this is quite understandable and we would accept it. We're of course now assessing performance delivery and focus. So every aspect of the recital is being looked at. Now we've been able to use our experiences from the summer to improve our filming guidelines, uh, creating download, downloadable documents and video to help explain the requirements more clearly. Please do take a look at these and signpost candidates and parents uh, to them if that's appropriate. Thank you. Um, we thought it might be useful to take a look at the submission form that all candidates are being asked to download from our website, complete and upload to the portal alongside their submission. Uh, would you guys mind taking us through that, please? Sure. So the submission form is very much like the equivalent anyway of the appointment slip that we ask people to use for their face-to-face -face exams. So you can see from the slide, we ask the candidate to provide their name and um, a date of upload of the submission and the exam details specifying whether they're entering for classical and jazz or rock and pop or a diploma and which instrument they're playing and which grade. You can see it says select from list there and the date of their submission. Then they're asked to list the pieces they're presenting in the order that they're presenting them. So you'll see some other boxes on there that say TF and OC there for technical focus for rock and pop and own composition or own choice for rock and pop or for classical and jazz. So if you have any rock and pop candidates, they must specify which songs being performed for their technical focus song. So they must then specify which technical work set number they're performing. So if you refer back to the technical work options we looked at before, uh, a piano student would either tick box one or box two, depending on which set of scales they've recorded. So it would say on the, um, on the scale list, one, set A, two, set B. And they need to name the two exercises they're going to uh, be performing on their video in the box on the right. So the second half of the form acts as a bit of a checklist for the candidate. Firstly, it provides a reminder that any pieces performed not from Trinity publications must be submitted with a copy of the score. There's a really useful link provided to a list of which publications uh, for, and which copies do not need to be provided to the examiner. We then ask for confirmation of which syllabus is being used. This is especially important where there's an overlap period in place, so please do make sure that candidates know which syllabus they're performing from and what they're presenting is A being accepted and B is all from the same one. The declaration then asks candidates to confirm they, that they have uploaded one continuous video that has not been edited in any way, that they have listed all of their pieces in order of performance and indicated which technical work they're presenting that they have uploaded their music as well, uh, as, as and where required, sorry. And in the case of diploma candidates, have uploaded their programme scores and any programme approval letter they may have obtained prior to submission. The final section of the form only applies where COVID restrictions on the day of the recording meant that the candidate has been unable to perform as per the usual requirements of the exam. For example, they've had to use a digital piano or have performed a duet using a backing track. This declaration is to confirm that these measures have only been utilised due to the unavoidable consequences of a local or national lockdown 
and must be signed either by the candidate, if over 18, or by a parent or guardian. One thing also to know um, is that although this form can be completed digitally without needing to print it off, complete it by hand and scan it back in again, it is not an online form. So you will need to download it from the website before uploading it to the portal. And this is most easily done on a computer rather than a mobile or a tablet. As a member of the UK and Ireland support team and having been involved in answering a lot of customer queries, sending out login details, rectifying issues with video submissions over what was a really crazy summer session. I'm really pleased that this time around we have the capacity, capacity to do what we do best, which is providing support to our teachers. Over the coming months, we will be continue, continuing to deliver webinars, responding to any emerging themes or queries that we think will be usefully addressed to a wider audience. So please do keep your eyes peeled for more sessions as we announce them, especially if you teach more than one instrument. Um, we will also be offering short surgery sessions to individuals or small groups that would benefit from a more individualised support session. These will aim to be between 15 and 30 minutes long and will offer a menu of options such as preparing for your exam or navigating the portal, for example. But as you're the ones delivering this, as you are the ones you know, preparing for this, if there is anything else that you think is missing, please do let us know. We've had a few questions sent in to us um, ahead of today's presentation, some of which I hope we have already answered, um, but we're going to do our best to answer those that we might not have covered yet. Um, we've only got 15 minutes left, so I don't know if we're going to get to the questions um, that Nicola's been flagging for us, but we'll do our best. Um, the first question is from Mary, and she asks how much flexibility there is from examiners to accept some students less than perfect pianos. Um, she says she has a few students who play on very old but well-loved pianos and some of the keys are a little honky-tonk. Will there be a markdown for this in the online exam? Linda, would you like to take that one, please? Well, actually, over the last few months, we have assessed exams played on instruments of varying qualities and standards. And it really is the manner in which those instruments are being played that's being judged. Obviously, keeping a piano tuned is part of one of the best ways of looking after it, but it's not always possible at the moment, and we realise this and understand. Thank you. Mary, I'm aware you also asked about entering candidate numbers onto the submission form for those who have not taken Trinity exams before. Um, my understanding is that this requirement is actually going to be removed from the form shortly, so please do leave this blank. Um, Patricia and Diane both um, asked very similar questions regarding helping very young children stay focused during their performance. Um, is it okay to prompt them um, to play a piece in the video or um, can we only do that with technical work or will the marking take this into account um, and is there a particular order in which you have to do the elements of the exam in? Anna? Okay so um, as in a face-to-face -face exam you can choose the order you perform your exam in so you could do the technical work at the beginning or at the end whatever you feel is going to be best for your student. As far as assessing the overall performance goes, we really hope that teachers are going to take this as an opportunity to develop the idea of a little concert performance with their candidates and then not therefore require um, prompting in between pieces. And that's part of performing, isn't it? On a, a larger platform to be able to work your way through a whole performance. So we'd really like to see videos where candidates are actually in control of that aspect and they've learned how to manage that. And of course, they can have um, help like bookmarks in their pieces, um, you know, little tabs that say one, two, three, or, you know, colors that, that um, will remind them of what to do. But as with any performance, it's a useful skill to develop, to learn your way round crafting a whole performance and we really hope that people are going to take the opportunity to work with that so that we can assess within that and making the transitions between pieces smooth and calm and creating an atmosphere for your virtual audience. Thank you. Um, Sarah has asked us a few questions, most of which I think we have already answered throughout the, se the session today. But one interesting point was whether the candidate needs to state the dynamics and articulation they're using for their scales and arpeggios. Um, Anna, did you want to take that one too, please? 
Sure, well, that again, that's on the form, uh, the downloadable list, and they're allowed, therefore, to write it on any list they create. They don't need to tell us which scales they're playing as long as they're playing them in the order on the list. So they don't actually need to announce anything. They just need to make a nice fluid journey through their technical work. Brilliant. Linda, Maxon has asked us where he can find the list of alternative repertoire for the 2021-2023 piano syllabus. Uh, yes, I know where that is. So this can be found in the syllabus, a link uh, to which is going into the chat now, and everything is clearly stated. Uh, when purchasing the books for the new piano syllabus, candidates have two options. We have the usual style books, which contain 12 exam pieces, performance notes for these 12 pieces, and of course the new technical work exercises. Alternatively, we have the extended edition, and these books contain the same 12 pieces, but also access uh, to the nine additional pieces as a download, which are very easy to get. And don't be concerned if you're printing off these pieces, it will have your name on the bottom of every page and say that it's all official. The, we'll, you'll also have the performance notes um, for all 21 pieces, downloadable audio for all 21 pieces, and the new technical work exercises, plus all the scales and arpeggios. I believe Nick has provided a link in the chat to the Buy, the Buy Books page of our website, which outlines this. Um, and as always, our books are available to buy through the Trinity shop. Uh, Nick put, um, popped in a question, uh, a few questions as well um, that I think we've largely answered. Um, but just to confirm, um, yes, candidates can be entered. Candidates can be entered for digital exams at any time. Um, although, if, like I said before, if you are entering your students through a local area representative as opposed to an online booking system, please do liaise with them about uh, when they are intending to do this and if they are, have any deadlines that they have set for receiving applications. Um, as mentioned earlier, they are being asked to enter candidates in large groups um, as opposed to as and when, so they may decide to set these deadlines, much like with face-to-face -face exams. Um, and can, like I said before, candidates will have two weeks from receipt of their login details to upload their videos. Um, Nick also asked whether a recording can be made on electronic piano, assuming it is touch sensitive and weighted keys, etc. Linda? Uh, well, this is something that sits within our guidance on submitting for digital exams where the government's COVID restrictions have prevented access to an acoustic piano. Um, so where a national local lockdown is in place at the time of recording, candidates may use a digital piano provided that it's touch sensitive with weighted keys. However, when recorded outside of a lockdown, we do expect an acoustic piano to be used. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we have got a very few minutes left where we could go through some of the questions that have been posted throughout the um, presentation today. So I'm just taking a quick look. Um, I'm going to go back to this one because I know you, you've you've kind of already answered this, but I just want to make double make sure it's absolutely clear it says regarding scales in the digital exam does the teacher select the type or, or articulation and dynamic when the candidate is playing them during the video recording I know the scales will be divided into groups I think there's a little bit of uncertainty about establishing the articulation they are written on the um, downloadable lists okay. so your set of scales will say for instance um, F sharp minor forte and staccato so you'll know exactly what um, you're, you need to do or the candidate needs to do and what the examiner is expecting to hear. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Linda, this one's for you. I have a grade five Trinity um, piano student who has a keyboard stroke digital piano. She has a plug in sustain pedal, but one of the 2018 2020 pieces also requires the Unicorda to be used. She doesn't have this. Is this okay for the exam? Um, well, I suppose if she's recording, mm, I think we're supposed to, you're supposed to have a functioning unacorda and sustaining pedal. Would you so, like me to dive there, Linda, I, I, with that yeah, help? So, pardon? Would you like me to dive in there? Um, I, well, I I've during, got a, I've got our guidelines in front of me, if that's oh, brilliant. Well COVID done, restrictions, Anna. Yeah, during COVID restrictions. Um, then it's probably okay, but Anna's going to fill you in on that. Just um, 
because we we are, we do allow digital pianos for graded exams as long as they are, as Linda said, they've got weighted keys and mm. um, are capable of producing any technical requirements that the piece mm. requires, and that would cover the unicorder as well. Um, you can use an electronic keyboard for a piano exam up to grade three if you're in lockdown and there is no other option but it still needs to be touch sensitive and achieving all the technical and musical demands of the pieces you've chosen. This is just largely because examiners can only assess what they hear so if you present something that doesn't fulfill those requirements they are only going to be able to mark what they're hearing from that piece. Is that okay? I hope I've covered that properly. <laughs> Linda, just shout at me if I haven't. Yes, yes. Sorry, I was just stammering there a bit. So thanks. No, for no it's fine. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, I'll, I'll let you two decide who should answer this one. <laughs> um, it isn't always easy to show pedal work when recording. How is this assessed when some pianos have poor equipment? It's kind of nicely leads on, really. I defer to Linda. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Anna said, we mark what we hear. Experienced examiners can hear when the pedal is being used, even if they can't see it. Um, and of course, sometimes we hear that it's being used far too much and we will comment upon it. <laughs> um, so I think we have to go with what we've got. Um, examiners mark what, what they hear and um, there may be a way of showing that the candidate is pedaling if you experiment with camera angles. I, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Um, this is a reiteration question, really. Um, do you need to write the name of the two exercises as on the supporting document or just the three titles of the three pieces? On the submission form? Yeah. yeah yes, you should, we must have the names of the two exercises as well, please. There's a little box for that next to the technical work box, so it should be easy yes. to do. Sorry, I, there's a very long question here that I've been trying to read and I can't quite get through it. <laughs> I can't quite skim right read it fast enough. So, um, uh, there seems to be quite a lot about the, the actual digital pianos. Um, how will an exam exams be assessed if the students play all their pieces on a digital piano with no dynamic? Um, well, I can take this one. If it's a digital piano, then they ought to be able to uh, contrast their dynamics because digital pianos should have weighted keys and be touch sensitive and be able to respond really quite well to dynamic differences. So as we mark what we hear and as we have the score in front of us, um, I think you can draw your own conclusions. Thank you. Um, so I'm just about where do you get the candidate ID from? Um, if you're submitting the first time, um, you won't already have a candidate ID. Um, it will follow, but like I said, if you're um, worried about putting it on the submission form, um, please don't. We, it's going to be removed from the form, um, um, so just leave that section blank. Don't worry about that. Um, that's kind of already been answered, I think. So. If, Does the examiner use headphones to listen to the performance as it would sound better? <laughs> Examiners um, work with whatever tech they need, I think, to really make their reliable assessment. So I think we'll all do whatever is going to give us the best opportunity of hearing the candidate. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So I've got a selection of devices that, um, that I use so that I can really hear what's going on. I wouldn't mind, though, if Trinity bought me some state-of-the-art new headphones. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> I know who you can submit that request to. Um, <laughs> um, right, I'm going to take the last question, because um, a lot of the questions that are left here have kind of much of a, a similar theme about digital pianos and things. Um, but the last one says, does lockdown include the tiered restrictions? Um, what I'm going to say is obviously this is quite topical, having had the tiers announced today. Um, it, it's a little bit of an apply your comment common sense you know if you're if you are in a situation where 
you can't access a, a, an acoustic piano, for example, if, that, if that's what your concern is, you can't access an acoustic piano, then then apply the COVID guidelines. Um, you know, if, if you're in it working, you know, if, if that's the case, then you apply that. Obviously, we want people to use uh, to use acoustic pianos where they can or maintain the situation much like a face-to-face -face exam as much as they can but if you're in a place where you know where you can't access a, a an acoustic piano um then apply the covid um guidelines is that right anna yeah <laughs> i mean we understand as well you know that there may be situations where people are shielding and mm. they may not be in lockdown but they can't go anywhere else to, to use an acoustic piano it's you know it's, the intention is very much to enable this where we can but of course I think we need to remember on the other hand of things that this isn't a stopgap qualification and so any arrangements that we're making for COVID do not necessarily apply when those things cease to happen which we all very much hope they will one day and this this qualification will then stand as it is and the rules will then need to be followed Okay, um, thank you ever so much. Um, Sharon, Sally, I don't know if you wanted to jump in or whether you wanted us to just say goodbye. Ah, oh, there's Sally, there we go. No, we are, we are jumping back in just to <laughs> say a huge thank you to the three of you and indeed to, um, I'm sorry, her name, um, on, the, on the chat there, um, Nicola on, on the chat, who's been massively typing away. Uh, and, and I think you've covered so much in that short space of time to give a really, really good overview of this exciting new qualification from, from Trinity. Sharon? Yeah, it's been wonderful, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this call. Um, I mean, you have you have got through a lot of questions <laughs> in a very short space of time. Um, I also just want to say that we, um, because uh, I've been I've been looking at the Facebook um, various um, various groups and we had upped our capacity for this webinar via Zoom, but it obviously didn't kick in. So we maxed out at 100 partic participants. So I just want to say a massive. Um, a massive sorry for those of you um, who were not able to get onto the live who aren't here there was obviously some sort of a blip at zoom because we did go in and we checked it and we should have had uh, a sufficient capacity so um, I just want to say apologies for that and to clarify for those of you and um, I see some um, has points have come into the chat there will absolutely be a replay of this. So um, if you missed it, you will be, um, <laughs> you will be able to, to watch it on, on, on catch up. So again, yes, Natalie, Anna, Linda, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you for having us. It's Love obviously it, new, um, new territory. I mean, it, it really, as Sally was saying earlier, it, it is wonderful the way it's kind of, it's pushed us to um, explore new shores. And um, I think it's, it's a really interesting ongoing conversation. Um, I know one of the things that Sally and I have been chatting about is just how powerful it is for, um, for our students to be recording a lot more of their practicing and their playing. And that in itself opens up that wonderful opportunity for, for self-evaluation. Um, so new worlds indeed. And we've also been talking, Sharon, about this idea of performance. So it's lovely to hear that you've got that. Students have to learn how to perform because that is not an easy option. You know, people shouldn't regard that as being the easy option because especially the younger children, getting, getting that sense of performance into their playing, it's, it's really quite, it, it's a big step, actually. But it's a fantastic thing because that's what making music is about. It's about sharing it with others. So um, Sharon and I are actually going to work on a series of videos. It's going to help um, to, to kind of portray what performance is about and how you can help your students to do that. So do look out, out for that over on our YouTube channel um, yeah. and subscribe if you haven't already. But, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, really excited about all this, really excited. Indeed. And I'm just going to put the link um, in the chat for those of you who um, 
are curious to come and join us over on our membership site. Um, there's a coupon code there, uh, free support, and it will give you access to that online membership site free for one month. And also just to say, check out our Facebook page tomorrow because um, obviously it's Black mm. Friday tomorrow, but we're calling it Sparkly Friday because there's kind of really nothing black about what we're sharing. We're gonna be sharing something for beginner piano students. Um, our graphic designer sent over something very special earlier on today. We've got very excited about it. It's completely free. so check out our Facebook page, uh, The Curious Piano Teachers, tomorrow and make sure that you get your free copy. So once again, I just want to say thank you to all of our panellists here and also to everyone who has been able to join us on the live call. I hope you have a great rest of the evening and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.